scapula is a triangular bone the lateral angle of the scapula is the glenoid where the humerus articulates so this is the glenoid it has a tubercle supraglenoid and infraglenoid tubercle it has got a coracoid process which is a finger like projection directed anterolaterally it has a suprascapular notch it has a superior border it has a medial border and it has a lateral border so it's a triangular bone now if we attach the head of the humerus here is the greater tuberosity the shaft of the humerus here you see a groove which is called as the bicipital groove and here is the lesser tuberosity this is the anterior view of the scapula and the humerus and let us first of all make the glenoid labrum this glenoid labrum is basically a projection which increases the concavity or capacity of the glenoid cavity outside the glenoid labrum let us make the capsule which encloses the supraglenoid tubercle is attached to the head of the humerus on the anatomical neck and then there is a lax part of the capsule and this lax part of the capsule the infraglenoid tubercle is usually out of this lax part of the capsule this capsule is strengthened by the superior middle and inferior glenohumeral ligaments gleno from glenoid to the anatomical neck of humerus now we will color this capsule up and in front of it we will make the subscapularis muscle which is attached to the lesser tub tuberosity of the humerus so here is the subscapularis muscle so after this we make another muscle which is the part of the sit muscles the supraspinatus the infraspinatus and the teres minor which are attached on the lesser greater tuberosity and this teres minor actually goes behind the lax part of the capsule to get attached to the greater tuberosity so the sit structure the teres minor therefore this lax part of the capsule is sandwiched between subscapularis in front and teres minor behind then this is the bicipital groove and we remember the attachments on the bicipital groove by lady between two majors and the lady is the latissimus dorsi and the two majors on the outer lip is the pectoralis major and the inner lip is the teres major 
so here we are going to attach the tds major and here we are going to attach the pectoralis major and the latissimus dorsi comes from behind like this and gets attached to the base between the two muscles so this is this is the latissimus dorsi and here we have the teres major teres major latissimus dorsi winding around the inferior border is called as the posterior axillary fold if we put the long head of triceps long head of triceps and this long head of triceps passes behind the posterior axillary fold like this then it can then it leak gets you into a quadrangular space here bounded superiorly by the lax part of capsule sandwiched between subscapularis and teres minor medially by the long head of triceps and inferiorly by the teres major and laterally by the surgical neck of humerus is the quadrangular space then you have a medial triangular space bounded by the teres minor the teres major and laterally by the long head of triceps this is the medial triangular space then you have a lateral triangular space bounded by the shaft of the humerus this is the shaft of the humerus the the posterior axillary fold latissimus dorsi and teres major and long head of triceps and this is the lateral triangular space the posterior cord lying behind the artery here continues continues as the radial nerve and passes through the lateral triangular space lies in the groove on the posterior surface of the humerus winds round the lateral border and becomes anterior so this is the radial nerve arising from the posterior cord you we'll make this posterior cord thicker it is posterior because it's lying posterior to the artery and we'll take the other branches of the posterior cord which are upper subscapular lower subscapular latissimus dorsi and axillary axillary passes through the quadrangular space winds round the neck of humerus supplies deltoid and teres minor so this is the anatomy of the triangular and quadrangular spaces which you must remember and of course accompanying the radial nerve is the profunda brachii artery and accompanying the axillary nerve is the posterior circumflex humeral artery and piercing the teres minor is the subscapular artery on this side is the transverse cervical artery on the medial border and above the suprascapular notch is the suprascapular artery so you may remember these arteries also around the scapula so this much 
quadrangular and triangular spaces this time so you remember the periscapular quadrangular and triangular spaces 